Hi, everyone. Hope everyone's good this week. Guess what? We're out of lockdown. Well, at least some of the way. Barnet, shorter, which is good. It's a weight of my mind. How is everyone? I've got my tea as well. I have been clearing up in here a little bit. I've still got lots to do, but uh, I'm quite busy sorting things out. In fact, I bought a new um, PC case for my PC as well. My Linux machine, which is currently sitting on the floor here. And I need to um, move everything over from that into the... Uh, to the new box, maybe upgrade a few bits as well. <sighs> I've got it all kind of linked in with um, the laptop so I can switch between the two theoretically, but I'm having some issues with the NVIDIA card for some reason. Some weird thing whereby if, if even though I'm switching between it and the laptop using uh, like a KVM type uh, switch USB switch For some reason it just goes off on one and it just won't won't come back and I can't quite work out exactly why why it's doing that or what it's doing because I don't think it's sleep because I've disabled sleep on it to prevent that happening so it's kind of weird I've got a weird bug to sort out with that Excuse me. So what everyone what has everyone else been up to? Um oh but the one bit of news that I saw today it was very good. Remember when we were talking about those robot arms? Uh this Kickstarter is still going. This is quite cool. <coughs> the amber. Is it the amber B one or the B O? B one I think it is. Hang on. Uh, The seven axis B1, yeah, seven axis, seven degrees of freedom, and it's kind of cool. Uh, no, I'll probably show you what that looks like. Hold on, let me just get the uh, browser up. Video shorts capture. Where was it? It's browser gone. I might want to change the way my um, OBS is set up as well at some point. Make it easier to find things. Uh, yeah, that's not picking that window again. So, yeah, this is quite a cool uh, robot arm. Um, not sure if I'm going to invest in it though, at the moment. It's quite a bit of money to invest. And I need the funds at the moment for um, the mice on boards, among other things. Um, but it's very, very cool. He uses his harmonic drive motors, which are fantastic, actually. Really, very, very cool. Um, and it is, it's a good deal in terms of pricing. It's a very good deal. But it is still quite a bit of money. I like it. Um, uh, the uh, 
that's his, the Russian guy review. Is he Russian? I think he's Russian. Yeah, he does a lot of uh, motor control, robot arms and stuff. He's actually designed one of his own. Uh, where is he? Probably a video here. Yes, this guy. And he's put it through, his pace, through, through ver the various paces. Look to the accuracy and things. This guy. Scientific, I think he's good. Do watch his tube if you ever get a chance. Uh, let me get a link for it, actually. He's... Um, he, he does a lot of really good stuff. Oh, I don't want to watch your adverts. So annoying when it does this. Um, so I can show you a video of him reviewing the um, robot arm. I love the way they package this for him. That's probably not how you get it on the Kickstarter, but that's the review box. Notice the ST. Um, thing here. It's got the uh, ST link. It gives you a clue as to what's inside those servos. Now let me find it again. There, look. That looks very much to me like an ST link. One of the low cost Asian ones. I think one of those plugged in my machine right now. Anyhow, check it out if you're into robot arms. Uh, also, check out uh, Scientific's um, builds as well, they're quite interesting. If you're in interested in 3D printed motor stuff, it's really cool. Um, let's have a look. Can we see? Um, hmm. That's very rude. That was strange. Completely lost the internet there temporarily, as well as the stream. Apologies. Um, okay, so onward. Uh, any news from anyone? Otherwise, I'm going to jump straight into um, into the amalgam stuff. Mm -hmm. I should be back now, Laurie.
Let's just get these windows up. Uh, Eagle, Melbourne Ford, look at that. Schematic. Hmm. Going on here. Uh, quick update where we are with the amalgam. Um, so this is the current state of the board. Uh, the dimensions, the dimensions are slightly higher. The dimensions are slightly um, higher than they were before. Um, I had to increase the boards just slightly to fit all the connectors and fixings in. Um, the reason I've got this diagram here, let me also open, I've got a picture version of this. I need to get this open because I need the dimensions. What I want to work on today, bear with me. is I need to do the carrier template. So we need to build the library part for the template. So if anyone wants to build something that's going to hold, you know, build a carrier board, they need the template. As do I. And I'd like to start playing around with, um, you know, one potential uh, carrier and start talking about carriers today. I am back. Good. I'm very glad. Right. So um, the other thing we need to look to do first then is the carrier template, the template board for the amalgam. Um, we just bring that up as well. Um, hold on, because this is completely changed. Damn it, what is it called? Uh, hold on just a second. Tile carrier, was it called? Hold on. I did start making a um, template before, but it's going to be wrong. I'm desperately trying to find it in my library. Amalgam Carrier. Yes, here we go. Um, so this is obviously now wrong. Let's just turn that off for a minute. And let's just expand the size of this slightly so we can see what we're doing. So let me change this first off. Um, this is now right. Um, the position of these holes is different. The dimensions of it are different, and also 
the um, yeah I know so, sorry lawyer I just seen your comment there four thousand dollars yes quite a lot but it is a fairly serious robot arm I mean for the money it's actually that's a good price but yeah it's not for just playing with that kind of money you've got to be quite serious about it obviously um, so one of the differences here is this goes how many how many pins have we got here p50 p100 yeah. so let's just change this right so it might not let me do this actually let me just try something Try and delete that. What happens? Because this is already probably linked into. Uh, yeah, it's not not going to let me do that. Hold on, hold on. Let me just unlink the symbol here. Um, Okay. I've got to kind of go and manually disconnect all these um, things. Bear with me one sec. Just disconnecting the um, symbol and the um, layout because I can't make changes until I've done that. People complain if you try and um, remove pins that are connected to things, unsurprisingly. So that now shows them as disconnected. Let me um, let's reduce the uh, um, I said it's symbol first. <sighs> um, so P62 got the same number of data lines. Hold on, P02, D0 through D63. That looks right. Leave those. What we don't have anymore is um, these. We don't have these. Um, everything else. Oh, wait a minute. No. Don't have these either. So we got to A7, I think. Don't have those. And we don't have those. So just um, press this now. Uh, the order is also different. This will be totally confusing, but I'll come back to that. Let's just move this. I think it's something like that. But actually, what we do, I know what we change, so let's just it's changing so it's the same actually and then take these two I think we go 
around we won't need that that that's the order if I remember rightly I can adjust this a bit better so how many so we've got 64 digital pins for power related pins uh, TX and RX actually simplified as well and then I analog pins The SCA, CTX, and SCL, CRX are um, can either be for driving can or primarily for I squared C. So that is that one, and we've got two ground naught volt ones, which is good. So that's right now. So if we now go and look at the um, packages, Um, this is a bit of a pain actually because the way that this is counted one two so it goes linearly that way we need to go to 80 in fact so if I just kill everything above 80 here And then remove Yeah. Take these. Yeah. That should be right. And then all of these need to be centered. My center of that should be five now. Hold on. Now we're in inches here. Hold on. Right, these need to be fifteen. Change the scale to nil. Needs to be so. Where is that? Minus fifteen. That's right. Oh, wait a minute. No, hold on. Wait a minute. The dimensions are sixty-four, so this needs to be minus thirty-two. And it should be plus and minus twenty two point five. 
So that should be well, so it's 15 from the end, so it's 32 minus 15. So that'll be 17 minus, minus 17. I think 17. And that's 4.5 from the bottom. Ah! Uh, And then it's 4.5 from the bottom, and that's 22. I said 22.5. 22.5. So this needs to be 22.5 minus 4.5, which should be 18, right? One one eighteen three. That should be about right dimensionally. Um, but the position of this is wrong. So um, that should be sixty four. Minus fifteen. So that would be forty nine. Oh, but it's half. Oh. Uh, forty nine. So that would be. It should be fifteen from the end. Just do it that way. from uh, 32 15 from 32 be 22 minus 5 17 are we looking about right now I think this needs to be higher. So the center of this needs to be uh, five mil from the edge here. Oh, uh, there's no center point on this. Damn it. Um, how annoying. Um, Some reason that looks wider apart. I need to double check this. So that needs to move up by a certain amount. I need to work out. So, uh, this. oh my goodness, not helpful. So that's. Four. That's sixteen. Hold on, let me just write this down. I need a pencil. Well, in fact, just um, use a note. Notepad, that'll do. Um.
uh, 16.815. It's the center of the top part of the connection and the center of the bottom part of the connection is 13.005. Bit awkward. Okay, so the difference between those two. Difference between there's my account difference between those two is uh, sixteen point eight one five minus thirteen point oh oh five equals three point eight one that sounds about right. Three point one between them. Okay. So for that to be consistent, then so to translate that, um, we need to be the width is forty five, so the center should be forty. We need to go. 3.81 divided by 2 equals 1.905. So 1.905 plus 40 is so we need 41.905. And then the other thing we need is 40 minus uh, that, which is 38.095. 38.095 for the lower one. Let me just check the arithmetic then. So the difference between that just check my math here. So difference between forty one point and 38.095 equals 3.809, which is wrong. So it should be 3.81. Why am I point not one off? Oh, because I typed it in wrong. So that's right. Good. So. And the difference between so it's thirty thirty eight point zero nine five is where we want to get to take away where we currently are, which is thirteen point zero five. 25.09, that's how much we need to move. 25.09. Okay. So, what I can do is I can group all of these. And then I can do a move.
so we want to move not 40 we want to go plus uh, to 25.09 that's nonsense oh I need to take away 22.5 from that. Sorry, because we're running symmetrically here. So when I'm measuring there, I need to be five below. So it's not 40. Right, let me recalculate. Sorry, I've done this wrong. <clears throat> because the top of this is 22.5. That's where I'm working from. 22.5 minus, uh, what was it? 4.5. 18. No, it needs 22.5 minus 5. Seventeen point five, and I need that to be class uh, three point eight one two nineteen point four zero five. Apologies, folks. And fifteen point five nine five fifteen. Let me just check that, make sure there's three point and eight one between those. Yes. So the difference between where they are now and where they need to be is fifteen point five nine five minus thirteen point zero five equals 2.59 so the move needs to be 2.59 that's better it's a bit more reasonable 2.59 yay wow sorry folks that was hard um that should be right now so let's just um just save that And let's just rewire the um, device.
just connecting up the um, different bits. You can, it doesn't show you that pop-up window, unfortunately. You can't actually see this. It's a bit annoying. Um, P1. I guess that's 63 or 64. I'm not sure if it's the right way around. I'm going to have to be a bit careful about this. Just need to check. Oh, dearing me, this is going to be upside down compared to that. Ah. It's reversed. It's reversed. It goes in the right order here, except the pinouts on the amalgam go from one side to the other. Like this. Whereas on this connector, they don't. How frustrating. And that means to make this correspond, I'm going to have to just mess around with this. Wait a minute. Sorry, it's a bit fiddly. I wish there was a transpose. So basically, what will happen is that goes yeah, two, three. And then two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, folks. I'm just. It's just easier when it comes to wiring them up if they've got the same pattern. Otherwise, it's very confusing. Um, this gives me a chance of getting it right first time. Uh, Eleven. Hmm. And it's a bit boring. But there you go. It's all got to be done. This is exactly the kind of stuff we have to do. Don't know why I ended up with a different arrangement of order from these two things. A bit weird.
90 and then if I just grab these and then adjust them just grab the bottom ones voila they're now in the right bloody order excuse my French so I'll go back to the device now Move that device carry up. Right, so P one schematic. <clears throat> P1 is ADC8. P1 is ADC8. P2 in ADC seven for the ADCs. Check that A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops, that was a zero, didn't it? P eight. So it's the eight ADCs, one end, and then what's next? Okay, let's just double check the circuit. So then we've got you see one CRX, CRX, and then CTX. CRX and CTX, CRX and CTX, CRX and CTX, CRX, CTX, and RX and then TX. Okay, and then the um, thirteen, fourteen, so. 13 is VBAT, 14 is 5 volts. 13 is VBAT, 14 is 13. Thirteen is VBAT, 14 is Five volts. And then fifteen is crowned sixteen. It's free. Uh, 
And then the order of the digital order. Okay. So this um the order of the digital pin, how does that go? Crikey. Um hmm. It doesn't really matter in this sense. So just do these like this. Because I haven't given them numbers anyhow. They could be any arbitrary number at this point. Uh, eventually I will go back to the schematic and do something more detailed with the numbering of the digital pins. Save, 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 save. Right, so the important thing is we've now got what is effectively the, um, uh, let me just edit this, cause there's one more thing I need to do here on this package, and that is just mitre. I like to mitre these pieces a little bit. I can then go back to, let's do a new, um, save as, we can call this, um, uh, just call it for the moment, amalgam tile. B1, because it's just experimental at this point. Uh, do you do, do you do, do you do? Well, we're going to put that in here. Let's just create a new folder. And we'll put it in here. And. So what we need to do is add, or oh, I need to update the library, sorry, uh, let me just switch here, um, let's get the, schematic window up. Okay. Add, add in the amalgam carrier. Just switch to Let me just change the size of a few things here. <clears throat> right, well, let's have a play around with a potential carrier. 
At this point, I don't know what carriers to build, but I do want to build a kind of tile carrier. That's one on my list. Let's have a little play around with that for the moment. Um, let me just add in here some tiles. So we could kind of do this sort of thing. So this is what a four tile might look like. Um, alternatively, if we want to do it multi-dimensionally, what we can do is actually let's just um, put these on the back side. This is what I was thinking actually. Maybe this will work. And what we do is this kind of thing. So underneath, we've effectively got four tiles. Something like this. In a relatively compact space. I mean, the dimensions of this are uh, right. read it over. So that's 66 by 90, effectively. 66 by 90 millimeters. So on the bottom, you'd have four tiles down. And then on the top, I was thinking you could have something else as well. You could have, let me just add this in. Uh, add in. Uh, I don't want that could go about there-ish. So let me draw this or sketch this in 3D. That might help. Bear with me. Let me just say where we are here. Let's go 3D a little bit. Uh, I do hope this is charged, otherwise, I'm going to be in serious trouble.
and need a new um, isometric. Bear with me one sec. Uh, why is it not connecting? Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. Uh, it's just updating go with me a sec. Come on, pick it up. Come here, we we'll just start again. There we go. Right, uh, let me just share this so you guys can see it. Right, so the way to think of this, um, hold on. There's the main carrier board. On the bottom we have four boards. Like this. Sorry, it's a bit scrappy. So we've got four boards underneath here. See my cursor? They're sitting underneath. So there's four tiles underneath. 
Then on the top, we've got the main carrier board up here. Oh, I've got my perspective mixed up now. Hold on. What's my undo? Hold on. Um, for some reason, OBS um, is coming and going. I don't know how much of that you've missed, guys. It's annoying. So underneath... Underneath the board, where the dotted lines are, you've got four tiles. And then above, you've got the... Um, God, where's the other controls on here? I've lost my. Um... And then you've got the carrier sitting on top. Sorry, the um, amalgam sitting on top of the carrier, which is the main uh, board here. This is really weird. I can't see. <sighs> where are. It's strange because it's. I've lost. I lost some controls on here. Maybe when I turn live beta on, that's what happens. Give me a sec. Turn this off. Well, folks, I'm just going back a bit here. It seems to turn the edit functions and the undos off when you're in live mode. Which I didn't realise it did before. Right, so underneath we have the tiles. Oh, come on. Didn't have to do that. Thank you. So underneath you've got the four tiles, and then these are on posts. And then on top, what you have... Hmm. You have is getting me angles wrong. We start again. You have this board here, which kind of goes across to the center, and this is the um. The amalgam board with its connector. There. Oh, why is this showing up? Mm. Come on. Catch up, please. Bear with me. Let me reshare it again. This can be a bit um, intermittent sometimes, you know, notice. 
There we go. So this is the carrier board on top, you know, with the USB connectors, etc. TVI, USB, USB. Why is it not changing when I update it? Okay, it must be a bug. It's very annoying. And then you've got this space on the bottom. So you've got three layers here with the carrier in the center, tiles on the bottom, the amalgam on top, and then you've got room for another board or possibility here on the on the um on this second half at the top of the carrier. Um and I was thinking of using that for something slightly new actually. Um, I had this wild idea a while ago. Um, so let me just take you back to um, to this one. One of the things I was thinking of, there could be a board uh, on on here that connects, and then what that board has on it is, let's see if I can simulate it here. The problem I'm going to have here is the holes actually in the. Um, What we have is this kind of arrangement. This is where I need to be careful with the holes. Something like that, and it could be a daughter board, or I could actually do it on the carrier. But this is something we can discuss here. Uh, what size of the tile? Sorry, I, I missed that. I'll give you the direct um, sizes. I think they're 32 by 40. Um, hold on, I'll tell you exactly. Um, sorry. Let me open one and it open. Uh, what's it called? Micro tile, I think I called them. Uh, 
they are uh, 32 by 44 give or take a little bit and I may need to move the um, the post holders power oh sorry you can't actually bloody see this there you go so we're looking at the top down so this on the we've got four tiles on the bottom which you can't see which is what the uh, blue um, connectors are representing then on the top we've got the amalgam board here with its USBs fa facing south to the bottom and then we've got this kind of northern add-on board or we could do it directly on the carrier I'm not sure yet it might be interesting to have these interchangeable and on this board what we have is these USB connectors here at the top now those USB C connectors uh, can be used as host USB ports out for things like game controllers and low bandwidth USB stuff up to 12 megabits per second there are six um, for each one of those there are six IO pins connected to the um, FPGA and they're protected with um, with the transient uh, suppressors and stuff that enables you to do something interesting it enables you enables you by setting the um, <clears throat> CC1 and CC2 identifiers correctly you can set it into alternate mode now the alternate mode isn't USB you can use the pins to do pretty much anything so in this case you're carrying six pins out to a device on the end of a USB cable USB-C cable so you've got six IOs there. Now those can form any number of combinations. Four of them could be SPI, for example, and the two side band channels, SPU1 and the SPU2 could be I squared C. Alternatively, all six of them could be used together as quad SPI for a quad SPI connection. Um, or you can have a TX up and a RX down pair plus a clock synchronous clock pair um, so you could have inter FPGA high-speed connections or you could use USB 12 megabits or you could even go down and just use UARTs depending on how you program those pins but those pins would enable you to connect intelligent peripherals if you like via USB-C cables and you'd be able to do the power management as well the other thing that would be on the board um, if this was an adapter board would be um, I'd need a microcontroller um, and in this case what I'm looking at using is um, one of the new STM32 units there we go That supports USB. Uh, something like one of these. That could be on this board here as well. Um, so let's just cut, just look at that top, what that top board might consist of as an option. Um, the other thing it could have is a couple of uh, power core holes. So it could be responsible for managing the power, um, which would be a useful function. I need to just add in 
Something like that, maybe. So the uh, microcontroller in this case is a Bluetooth, so it does the communication as well. It could probably be need to be some sort of antenna. Um, Something like uh, the ones we were using before might work for the alloy stuff. Something of this sort of nature. Um, so what the uh, microcontroller in this case is doing is it's providing Bluetooth, um, and that will be available over UHART and SPI, which is connected into this connector. The extra I/O connectors in here go to the USBs to give us those six I/Os per board. And then some of the IOs on this board control the CC1 and CC2 connectors, which control the mode in which the USB is, and can possibly also do some pull ups and pull downs. Plus, we probably have some, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, we need a bunch of these protectors. And then we've got. Uh, Four, so we've got six times four, twenty-four, so we six of these. <coughs> and these suppressors and diode protectors. <sighs> Kind of go in here. So all the signals get some protection. <coughs> we probably want to add some uh, small resistors in there as well. Um, Time. Okay. 
just to give us some protection and to stop the lines running in too much. Those would be low ohmage, like 33 ohms or something. So that's my initial idea. Um, let me just look at the chat now and catch up. What is annoying actually is this, um, it's kind of the wrong way around. Uh, if I can rotate this. It's going to be slightly skew if, but you get the idea. Right, so what's Laurie saying here? I don't understand dimensions. The amalgam board is 64 by 45. Um, and that is, just so you can see, that's this board here. Yeah. Carrier board in this case is like 100 by 90 or 90 by 100, depending which way up you've got it. Um, the tiles are 44 by 32, I believe. Now the carrier is. Uh, 90 by 100, I think, currently. Ah, it's gone back to inches. How very annoying. I mean, that's not centered on naught anymore. She's going to confuse us. It's it's actually, so it's, it's it's about 67 by 90 currently as drawn, Laurie, the entire carrier board. So in this arrangement... <laughs> This this carrier board um, would just have a bunch of sockets and holes. And then what we're adding is four tiles on the bottom. We're adding the amalgam on the top on the right hand side here. And then this kind of uh, extension via USB board here with Bluetooth. So that's my initial idea as a carrier. I mean, we can do all sorts of carriers. Because don't forget, from the amalgam point of view, we've got 64 digital IOs, eight analog IOs, you've got a UART, and you've got uh, I squared C slash CAN, but probably I squared C. Does that answer your question, sorry? Are you okay on the dimensions? What would you use the extension boards for? Well, all sorts of different things. So, say you wanted to do a games pad type thing. One of those USBs could drive several game games connectors. So you could have a on the end of a USB cable, you have a game connector with several sockets, for example. Um, the other thing you could do is you could have a motor driver on the end of one of those. Um, and if we support the power, um, what do you call it, USB-C power, um, not power detection, PD, what's it stand for, power, oh, I've forgotten it now. Um, powered device. And the USB-C powered device can go up to 20 volts at 5 amps, but that's the outside, you wouldn't normally do that. So each one of those USB ports is capable of supporting a 100 watt device, theoretically. So you could have all sorts of powered devices on the end of that if you needed to, including small motors for example. 
Um, yes, I mean, if you were doing just a games type controller, then you wouldn't use this board. What you'd have on this board would be, in fact, I don't know if you'd use this carrier. You'd just use a specific carrier with all the connectors on that you want from the outset, including the stuff to drive the LCD, right? Sorry, just checking my messages, guys and girls. Might have to just take a quick uh, comfort break shortly. Um, yeah, I think for gaming, I think you'd do a specific carrier, frankly. It's the size of two tiles, Laurie, the extension board that's on the top. It's as wide as two. It covers the same space as two tiles. But more importantly, it has more IOs, actually. It has double the IO of a tile. In fact, now it has quadruple the IO of a tile, I think. Wait a minute, hold on, we've got eight, 16. Yeah, it has double. Uh, or quadruple of a tile, double of the equivalent space of two tiles. It has 32 IOs because we only need 32 IOs to drive the tile. So we've got 64 total. So the analog and the 32 of the 64 drive the bottom tiles. We're left with 32 tiles, I squared C and uh, UART. <clears throat> <clears throat> you know what goes here as I say we could put it on a carrier or it could be a board that goes on this carrier in which case this carrier all this carrier does is has a bunch of connectors um, and the other thing that you could put on here is things like uh, higher voltage regulators for example but at the moment these are just ideas that I'm playing around with I'm trying to work out what's possible um, so I'm open to ideas really I think if you were doing something that was for gaming then you'd probably do a gaming specific um, I'd probably want to have something gaming specific in terms of carrier because the requirements of gaming are somewhat different to everything else as you say, you might want to have um, either USB-C connectors on there, or you might want to put the game connectors directly on the board. Not sure which is the best way of doing that. The only problem with putting the game connectors directly on the board is you have to decide what the game connectors are first up front, I guess unless you had all different types of game connectors. However, the problem with that is the game connectors tend to be rather large. I mean, physically large. And fitting lots of those on might be a bit tricky. Um, the extension is the size of a double tile, but it isn't compatible with a double tile. These are sitting on top. so. If you were to look at the sound we've made up, so you've got the carrier board in the middle, you've got the tiles underneath, one, two, three, four, then a, and the distance there uh, is a bit greater because that uses the 0.1 headers, which are greater distance from the board. Then on the top, we're using the 0. the 1.27 connectors, just like um, you know we are connect the black edge connectors it's just the same here so if we're using uh, you know th this connector here is like one of the black edge connectors and this one's a bit larger for the amalgam because it's 80 pins rather than um, 
<clears throat> rather than um, 50. Let me show you one without the big ones on. So remember those? So that's what you're looking at here, is one of those. I mean, yes, you could have another two tiles on top. That's the other possibility. However, I find that less attractive because I think having a board to do something slightly different here, like um, things like Bluetooth and other stuff that we might want, might be useful. And this is really just my first pass on it. Right, I'm going to have a quick comfort break, guys, and I will be back. I'll leave this up so that you can see it. Okay. Um, just going to turn the sound down whilst I do this.
one, two, one, two. Can you hear me, guys? You should be able to hear me again now. <sighs> Cheers. Some water. So, I mean, what we could do, for example, is have another two tiles on the top pit. So we'd have a total of six. We'd still have another 16 IOs left if we did that. Um, but what we could do is do the USBs. We could move these USBs. Could we move these USBs over here and put them under the carrier? That would be an interesting one. Trouble is, because of all of the um, power holes, that would be difficult to do. Let's just let's just go with the idea for a second because it's definitely interesting. It could be more efficient. It would mean we have to put the commit to putting these on the carrier, right? But having said that, it could be a good solution. Except we probably couldn't do as many thinking about it because we haven't got as many IOs left. Bear with me a sec, I'll adjust. Oh, Twinkles. What are you doing? Me? Did you not finish it? Oh, just say hello to the folks. Hello, you want to go through to the other room? Oh, you want to go out? Typical. And put this on here. Yeah. Not sure about the Bluetooth on there. I'll come back to that in a minute. There is some alternatives. So if we did that kind of thing. Let me get rid of this. And then we have two more tiles. As if by magic. On top. Uh, there is a problem here. <laughs> because I've made a change to the tiles that makes this impossible. We'll come back to that in a sec. Well, uh, Laurie's saying, are you looking at USB-C on the carrier? Before I wasn't, that was on a board that plugged into the carrier. But I'm considering, well, what if we didn't do that? What if we use six tiles? So we've got four on the bottom and then two on the top over here. It's actually impossible right now because the power would short because I haven't offset these powers on these tiles like I did on the original idea ones. You have to offset them. Because you're reversing it, top and bottom, you're plus and minus because it goes through these. Um, causes problems. But that's solvable. Let's forget that for the moment. That's solvable. It just means 
staggering the uh, the whole positions so that they don't interrupt with each other. But this would give us six tiles, but it wouldn't now leave us with 32 IOs. It would leave us with 16 IOs. So we couldn't support four of these USB-Cs. For example, we could only support two USB-Cs. Yeah, the idea of using USB-C is this um, powered cable connected device of some sort, peripheral of some sort. That's the idea behind it. And also so that you could you could also link these together. So it could be a high speed differential channel as well. <clears throat> um, so yeah, because you're using the extra 8 here and 8 here, that means you've taken 16 out of 32. You don't have enough to do 6 in each one of these anymore. Although you could do 4 in each one of those. And not have any sidebands. That would mean that you can't do Quad SPI, for example, but you could still do SPI and Dual SPI. It means that you couldn't do Clock Differential, but you could do 8 slash 10B or something. Which is a possibility. Um, the sideband could be something like common I squared C that comes in the microcontroller, possibly. Um, the advantage is that you've got more tiles. And the thing you have to think of here are is having six tiles much better than having four? I mean, normally, yes. Well, if you've got more of it, then it's better. But you're possibly sacrificing something else. So... This whole thing is about playing around with the ideas of what we want to put on here, what we want to make optional or not, what we can fit into a you know reasonable space, um, those kind of things. Oh, and we lose these as well. There are all sorts of carriers we can make at the end of the day, guys. No real limitation. I think from a gaming perspective, that would be a very specific type of carrier because we want specific type of connectors on there. Wouldn't you agree, Laurie, that we do a separate carrier for the gaming slash retro stuff? Because I think the requirements of that audience are different. We could use the same amalgam card, but the carrier itself we want to put things on there that were that lent themselves towards the gaming gaming world so that that stuff came as standard yeah Laurie's saying the difficulty i have is imagining imagining the different use cases yeah i mean there can be all sorts of different carriers possible the question is you know, with Black Ice, sorry, with Ice Core, we had a carrier called Black Ice MX, and that was a standard thing. And we didn't go much further, even though I designed a few others, we never really sold them. But in this case, we have opportunity to design carriers for, you know, 
more interesting markets. But I think, yeah, the gaming part, gaming slash retro part, has different requirements from the others. Trying to make one that does both gaming and, say, robotics, for example, would be madness, in my opinion. That just wouldn't make sense. Um, and I'm trying to avoid going the PMOD route here. And maybe that's madness. Maybe there should be a PMOD uh, version, PMOD expansion. I mean, you've got an awful lot of IOs to fit in. You've got 64, uh, which is more than we had with the Ice Core. With Ice Core, we had 48 plus a double P mod effectively, but we had the CD as well, so yeah, we'd have quite a few more P mods. You could kind of do a hell of a lot more, but it's a bit mad. Laurie says, uh, the use cases I am thinking about are mainly gaming with five robot image processing. Well, the image processing part of robotics. Well, the image passing, processing part of everything is already done on Amalgam itself because the camera FPC connectors are actually on Amalgam. Yeah, all the high speed stuff is already on Amalgam. It's the expansion for the lower speed stuff that we're kind of dealing with here. if that helps so this is a case of narrowing down so on the amalgam itself don't forget we've got two fpc connectors that could be used for you know a stereo camera two cameras or it could be one infrared and one normal camera or just one camera and maybe not use the other one for cameras we've also got hdmi on board so we don't need to worry about getting the video on and off um, in terms of connecting for a monitor type application Plus, there's the two high-speed USB uh, connectors on the amalgam, so we don't need to worry about the high-speed communication parts. The ULX3 has probably pioneered how far we can go with retro computers. Uh, it depends what you mean. Are you talking about in terms of capabilities from the HDL point of view or I mean from the gaming point of view what would you put on and from the gaming and retro point of view what would you put on a carrier what would be your priority things that you want on there Laurie you want some sort of gaming connectors, wouldn't you? If so, which ones would you put on there? You probably want some USB A's, as you mentioned before. That's easy. Um, what else would you put on there? Would you put a VGA on there? Do you need to do that when you've got a HDMI on the amalgam? Um, you probably put a few audio connectors on there, as in the analog type, jack type audio connectors, maybe. Or you can do the audio up the HDMI if you want. Um, Laurie's just saying here that later 16 and 32 bit gaming consoles probably need a faster, bigger FPGA than an ECP5, yeah, possibly. Then, then you'd need to go up. Well, I don't know. What is it that you need? Are you thinking more lookup tables or just faster logic? Um, don't forget, we've got more memory on Amalgam than you get on the ULX3, I think. I can't remember exactly how much is on the ULX3, and the memory is a bit faster too.
Yeah, the amalgam goes most of the way with HDMI with what it's got on board. It doesn't go all the way. You need to add some things. The low frequency interfacing parts. Oh, you only forgive me. Portable gaming consoles are different. Yeah, well, you'd need to interface to the LCD, for example. So you'd have some sort of LCD connector. That's actually a little bit tricky in that um, they're a bit non-standard. I'd probably go with something like the parallel FPC connector that they use. So that can normally do parallel and SPI and or STA depending on how you configure it. But if you cover all of the pins, you can actually go with those parallel ones. You can do either 8-bit or 16-bit wide buses to them over the FPC connectors. Um, you know, with the relative improvements in buffering speed into the... Um, device itself. Um, but yeah, in portable gaming consoles, you'd also need some kind of like thumb controllers or some such, you know, on the board or whatever. On the console front, you know, if you want to go full whack, do it properly. So yeah, it depends what you're thinking in terms of the gaming console or gaming stroke retro application. Uh, I guess in a lot of the retro applications, they're plugging in the HDMI, right, rather than using an LCD. I mean, what would the next up gaming uh, devices be? Are you talking about things like PlayStations and stuff, I guess. Because they are a di different kettle of fish from a graphics point of view. You're into GPU sort of territory there. Yeah. People have done PlayStation 1 stuff. I'm not hugely familiar with what the requirements are in terms of memory and things or performance and whether that could actually be done in an ECP5. Not sure. You probably know more about that than me, Laurie. What would stop you getting those done in the ECP5? The Sega Saturn or Dreamcast? Is it lack of lookup tables that's a problem here, or is it a memory issue or combination? I mean, what are the problems that are capping where well, you can get to with the retro stuff right now? What's, hold, what's holding it back? Jake Hat did an SN SNES port for the Ultra X3S. 
you relax for you. Okay. So it fits. Or some big compromises with it. It does not run many games. Hmm. I mean, the key to making this good for retro is designing the carrier, right? For the amalgam board. That's the way it would be better than the ULX3, for example, because you've got that choice. Um, the mode 7 games do not work, I think. Signal processing is one issue. What, because there was not enough um, LUTs left, or um, it just hadn't been implemented? That's part of it. GHGL. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know enough about that, those games and the implementation thereof as to what the limiting factors are. But there will be limiting factors, obviously. It may just be sheer number of resources. Okay, so... The current ports of some of those more advanced ones are done in Bavado or something using um, Xilinx and perhaps using more proprietary parts of their uh, tool chain or features that are difficult to port, maybe. Okay, so moving on from those, um, let's park those because we don't really have enough information. It'd be worth talking to people like uh, Cat Gate to find out. Sorry, Gate Cat. Whether that's whether there's anything that we can do about any of those issues, um, or whether that's just a porting. Problem, i.e., more people need to be working on it and fixing the issues, perhaps. And there are, of course, CCP5 issues, as you say. Um, it would probably still be worth doing a retro carrier, though. However, what would you put on that retro carrier? A lot of USB-A. How many are you thinking of? At least three. Well, that's easy to add in. I mean, they're a bit bulky. That's the only problem. But what I did on the... Um so if you wanted them, say you wanted them underneath the, uh, actually on the carrier board, but underneath the amalgam to make it neat so that the, the connectors uh, line up with the existing amalgam connectors, but underneath is you'd need to, you have to use these kind of, um, I can't find it, bear with me a sec. 
Let me see. Huh. Put those in here. Put it somewhere else. Oh, what's that doing? I need to fit this in better. This is clearly not sized right. That's weird. Where did I put that? Oh, I've been moving a few things around. Now I can't find anything. You know, normal story. Hmm. Ah, these ones aren't fitted. Damn it. Okay, my shelving system here is not the best. So on here, if you look at the USB connectors here and here, these aren't cut out, but these cut out so that the USB connectors actually sink below the board. So that actually works so that you could have the USB connectors on the front here underneath the carrier. It is possible to do that with USB uh, A connectors. Right, let me just clear this up. I totally wrecked the place. Anyway, that is you get when you don't use bookends to fix your books they topple everything over so you can get you can get the semi sunken USB a host female ports in there underneath the um, <clears throat> carrier so at least three so keyboard mouse and joystick yeah we could probably do four well, I don't know how big are they uh, hold on uh hmm I save this hold on right open uh, I wonder if I've got that one here black edge hold on So you can see these USB connectors on here, they actually sink down through the board. Uh, you can do this arrangement, I don't do it here. Um, Put this kind of stuff in them. 
Now, how many could you fit in of these? Probably not many, but they're quite wide, these. You know. Physically, uh, you know, if you wanted them to fit under the character, you could do three. You'd also have to avoid the holes, which might be a bit tricky. I mean, you could always do a bigger board, right? It doesn't have to be the same size as the amount of them. Um, you could also have USB on the side. You know, you could have it on here kind of thing. If you wanted, and do a few more. Um, so Amiga would need free, is what uh, Laurie's saying. Can't currently make the Amiga work with open source tools. Needs Lattice Diamond. Oh. What are they doing with Lattice Diamond that we can't do the open source stuff? I can see that the amalgam and the tiles would be better for robotics than an existing board. Gaming on this board will only work if someone does a DDR2 controller with necessary latency. Yeah, I mean that that stands to reason that we will be doing a DDR2 driver. I don't know how quick it's going to be. That's going to be interesting to find out. There is gearing, you know, the the ECP5 does have support for DDR2 and DDR3. What we don't have support is in Litex, for example. There is no Litex support for DDR2. We'd have to do that. Lattice Diamond has better VH. Oh, okay. So it's written in VHDL. That's why you're using Lattice Diamond. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about the GHDL side of things. I've never, never touched that. So I don't know. I mean, I know there is some work being done on it, and it probably will get better. Otherwise, you've just got to manually convert it to Verilog, I suppose. Yeah. So on the um, the comment, I can see that amalgam and tiles will be better for robotics than existing boards. Well, yes, tiles would be. I concur, but tiles aren't just for for robotics. They can be used for all sorts of different things. They're just mechanically much more stable than things like key mods. Plus, you can add in power. Right, I'm just going to get rid of this USB because I don't really need that in that one. So it's about exploring the options, really. That's what that's what this stream's about now today. Exploring those options. Where can we take this? You know, I want to see more than one carrier aimed at different things. Uh, I want to do the tile things at some point. Because I think that would be useful from an automation type point of view. Well, when my um, multimeter probe is hanging down. <clears throat> I don't know what the generic one should be, um, or whether there should be one. But we do need to start thinking of it. Because when we make the boards and start testing them, we're going to need some carriers as well. I would like to see some working image processing applications. Well, I think there's going to be a lot of development there, definitely. I think you're going to see a lot more of that. I mean, the stuff that I want to do, I know that um, Gatecat is working on some stuff as well. So, you know, um, there there is certainly um, an appetite for it.
At the moment, I'm not convinced that ECP5 is fast enough. What, for image processing applications? I don't see why not. Depends what you want to do, really. Both you and Gatekept presented an architecture of image processing without frame buffers. I've never seen that work. Explain what you mean. Without frame buffers. Depends on the sort of processing that you're doing. I mean, there is pixel processing, there is line processing, and there is frame processing. But it depends on what it is you're trying to achieve as to which method makes the most sense. You know, how much of the video you buffer at any point in time will depend on the sort of things that you're doing with it. I mean, so say you were doing, I don't know, maybe you want to do something like, maybe you're using like an infrared camera and you wanted to do heat tracking or something, yeah? So you're going to follow a blob of heat around, right? Then the first thing you're going to do is your input will do interpolation to downsize and change the range, etc. That can be done over several lines. You don't need to hold the whole frame to do that. Um, then you've got something smaller where you can delimit where that is, your area of interest. And you're effectively downsizing that interest point with a centered vector. You're kind of doing blob, blob tracking or something like that, you know. I don't know. I, you need to be more specific about what it is that you're thinking of doing. Uh. Why has no one done it? Done what? I mean, I have. I've done stuff like that. Things like uh, identifying um, number plates and stuff. Done that. Image processing on an open source FPGA board. I think that's more down to the tools, really. I mean, I've done it. I have done it. I've had to do it, you know, professionally. Um, I haven't done it in open source, but, you know, that's, that's kind of irrelevant, really. The fact is it can be done, but it depends what you're trying to do. There are different things that you can do. If you look at, if you look at um, things like OpenMV, the sort of functions that you're talking about there, 
a lot of those functions can be done inside the FPGA and can be done a lot faster inside the FPGA. <coughs> but it is trickier. Yeah, I have done some of these things with FPGA. It's definitely um, better for doing that. It is harder to write the stuff. HDL is harder. Um, but it can be very quick. I don't know. OpenCV is different. That's designed to run on, um, you know, architectures that have a lot more memory and stuff, and different architectures. OpenMV had to rewrite all of their stuff. They couldn't use OpenCV because it wouldn't run on those architectures with smaller amounts of memory. Don't forget the small amount of memory that they have to run the OpenMV tools in. Have a look at what OpenMV can do, because that will give you a clue, because those operate in very constrained environments in terms of memory and um, in terms of um, processing. Are you familiar with have you, have you looked at OpenMV? So they're probably one of the most popular um, people in this area. Uh, they're running it all on H, H, F and H7s. Yeah, this, I know you, you, you're calling it from MicroPython, but all the libraries, they have an open MV set of libraries that are all written in C and all optimized for ARM, low level optimized, including assembly tweaks and all sorts of clever stuff that they've done in order to make it work and make it work, you know, in a very memory limited environment. We have much more scope than that because a we have a h7 as well as you know the uh the fpga plus we have all the ddr2 memory attached to the fpga which can be used um when you're doing it in the fpga you are effectively setting up uh streaming processing and you're passing one off to the other to the other to the other and each part is doing a different part of the image processing effectively in, in like a pipeline in stages whereas if you do that inside say the microcontroller inside the H7 you have to do it as multiple passes so it's, it, you can't do as much as fast but, but you, you do have a limit inside the FPGA because you can only do for example um, um, integer type math. You can't do floating point type math because that's just not scalable inside the FPGA, building a floating point unit. But a lot of things can be done using integer type uh, math.
Uh, well, it's definitely possible, Laurie. I mean, I've done some before. Um, FPR, FPU in VEX work. Yeah, but the trouble is, you've only got one floating point unit. That means that everything has to go for it. The whole, the whole benefit of the FPGA is that you can do all of this stuff in parallel. You know, and you've got multiple DSP units that you can use in parallel to do the signal processing. So you can actually move, you know, your frame rates up much higher, your line rates you can deal with are much higher. Yeah, well, a lot of it needs to be done. It hasn't been done much in the open source world yet, but believe you me, it's used a lot um, in the closed closed source world. Um, and we will definitely see a lot of that emerging. Yeah, as soon as people start writing the stuff, then people start using it, right? But it takes people to do it first. And it's not trivial to do it in the FPGA. You're certainly using standard HDL tools. I think being able to do something somewhere in between HDL and HLS, definitely there's an opportunity there, particularly if it's optimized for streaming and pipelining. Um, that, that's where the um, big wins will come in, because it'll be much easier to do using those sort of tools rather than just Verilog. Doing it in Verilog is a nightmare. Unless it's a very simple thing. I had to do some number plate stuff in Verilog, and that was tricky. But it turns out to be fairly simple. Or at least the bits that needed accelerated turned out to be fairly simple. And it was just converting the existing algorithms from a kind of sequential, uh, you know, past core base thing to um, a bunch of uh, concurrent processes that are running in, in the FPGA or uh, filters, if you like, pipelines. Well, it will only happen if people want to do it at the end of the day, Nori. People haven't really made boards aimed at this. You know, OpenMV are probably a long way ahead of other people. You know, by making boards for this, these sorts of applications. But they've based it around, you know, fast microcontrollers. And it, their stuff's used quite a lot in open source. I mean, if people want to do it, they will do it. If they don't want to do it, then they won't bother. That's the end of the day. Wow. Either OBS or uh, Twitch is having some real issues today. Keep getting these disconnections. And I don't think it's the... Um, I don't think it's my internet connection that's causing it. I think it's something else. It's just these sudden bang, the frame rate goes down and it's gone and 
in the pause and then it comes back up. It's like it loses the actual connection. Uh, sorry, the actual connection to the servers. And I say my open MV board may be rather out of date. I think I've got a slightly newer one than you, but I mean they're constantly working on new ones. That's the one I've got. I don't know if that's the same as your one. That's uh, H7. But yeah, I think they're like another generation beyond this, and they're working on the next version. It's really cool actually. It's a great little board. What makes it good is the software actually. You did face tracking with it. Yeah, that's quite popular. There's a bunch of things that they you know that people commonly do. They use things like TensorFlow as well for image recognition. There's like a it creates a smaller uh model that fits into the microcontroller um what are the other things they do a lot eye detection eye tracking um blob tracking marker tracking um qr code stuff um and now with the infrared cameras they do like heat tracking and stuff as well that's really just block tracking but you need an infrared camera basically um yeah there's a few things you can do that are kind of fun we'd be silly not to take advantage of the capability let's put it, put it that way you know Um, I think with Amalgam, the trick is working out what bit you want the FPGA to do versus what bit you want the uh, um, the STM to do. Balancing those bits. Yeah, it is quite a bit of work, depending what you're doing, really. But I mean, you might be just you doing something very simple with the FPGA to reduce the bandwidth. Like you can have it do the resampling, for example, and the interpolation and the gamma correction and the demosaicing, all that boring stuff that takes up processing power. You could have that all done in the FPGA and it's actually quite simple to do a lot of those things. Um, so that the, you know, the microcontroller itself is freed up to do the more interesting bits and bobs. And it has to deal with a lot less data because you've already, you know, effectively compressed it down. Uh, one of the other things that's in the H7 that you don't get in the F7 so on the amalgam, the higher end boards, you've got uh, you've got a JPEG compressor built in, which is kind of useful to, if you want to stream it out to USB or something, or save it to an SD card. You would have to understand the OpenMV software to offload part of it. Yeah, well, you could replace parts of their library if you wanted to, if you wanted to go that route. There's nothing stopping you running their libraries and then optimizing different parts of those libraries, leveraging what's already there. If that's what you want to do. I mean, it is a difficult project, but if you're into that kind of stuff, then you're into that kind of stuff, right? When you're into doing that kind of thing, it's specialist in that that sense. 
but one of the key things would be finding a way of doing it more easily i.e. not having to bang it out in Verilog that is difficult for anything other than trivial stuff um, and that you know as I say you need something in between the HGL and HLS to do that uh, and that's coming so you know be interesting to see how well that could be applied or not and how efficient something like that can be within you you know the lookup table budgets that we have Soon if we get some cards done, we can try it out, Laurie. Bit of fun. Anyhow, I'm going to call it a day today. That's more than enough. But it's just food for thought, really, on which way we go from the carrier point of view. What are the low hanging fruit and what we put on those different carriers? I'd like to, you know, launch at least one, maybe two carriers. Um, have you looked at a specific high level synthesis language? I'm looking at all of them. And I'm looking at everything out there at the moment. Um, one that I'm very interested in, um, that I'm looking at, is called, I think it's XLS. Uh, hold on. And this is really cool. I really like this one. This is the one I fancy, if you like. This is up my boulevard. And this, that's very much kind of pipeline, uh, stream based. It's got a lot of people contributing to it as well. Plus it has the weight of Google behind it, of course, which is always a tad helpful build systems a bloody nightmare for it but i think that's because it's you know come out of google and they tend to use um what do they call it is that what they call the damn thing uh basil b-a-z-e-l I think that's the standard that they use. So yeah, I want to spend some more time with that. I've played around a little bit, um, but I, I, I need a decent, you know, piece of hardware to try and play around with it on. So I'm waiting for an amalgam before I do more of this. It's just not worth doing much of it on um, the existing hardware. It's interesting. It's, uh, to me, it's a nice in between this. It's, better. it's certainly one of the better ones. 
anyhow I'm going to call it a day um, uh, let's, let's, I'm going to stream again next Wednesday um, but have a think about carriers because we do need to solve this um, we need, we're going to need one or two carriers out the gate with an algorithm so have a think about what would be good really and let me know I'm always down on discord as you know or the forum so if you've got good ideas uh, hopefully this has whetted your appetite a little bit as to what we could do um, it starts a conversation really did you have any other questions anyone before I disappear off anything that would be helpful to get you thinking along these lines Yeah, I'll probably create one. What I need more than anything is a name for this rather than amalgam. <laughs> I still don't know what to call this. I don't want to call it amalgam long term. That's just like the code name, if you like, for putting it together. Remember last week I said we need to think of a name of something core for the board. Do we need to come up? If we can come up with a decent name, then I'll create a channel to represent that. What I don't want to do is create an amalgam channel and then find out that that name, we're not using that name moving forward for the final stuff. So we just use. Um, We can just use the Black Crab channel or something for the moment. Or general. There's a general channel as well I've got down there. Um, Anyhow. Thank you all for joining me this evening. And uh, I will speak and see you all either down on Discord, uh, on the forum, or if not then next Wednesday when we do the stream. Ciao folks.